am Doc Almond, a curriculum and e-learning specialist. Welcome to the channel that helps you learn fast and teach smart. COVID-19 introduced us to a new normal. The education sector had to quickly change. In this critical time, we need to work together. In the last few weeks, I sought the advice of Filipino teachers abroad, Siri Suva and Henny Fabre of Auckland, New Zealand, Love Latosa of Indonesia, Romel Agno of Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, Michelle Hermoso of Saraburi, Thailand, Davis Apas of Natanburi, Thailand, and Grace Salibe of New York, USA. They shared their experiences of teaching through the pandemic and offered practical tips we can all learn from. Our team edited interview clips to create videos on various topics about remote learning around the world. You may watch this video independently or along with other related videos from the interviews. In this episode, we focus on a special group of learners, our youngest and cutest in K-12. Among our interview videos, this is the most musical. Keep watching if you want to know how Teacher Love and Teacher Michelle keep their little learners focused on their computer screens for remote learning. Hello teachers, I'm Teacher Love or Miss Love. I'm currently here in Batam, Indonesia. I've been teaching here for two years as an English teacher for grades 1 and 2. Primary talaga namin na ginagamit is Zoom. But we are using Google Classroom wherein mag enroll ang mga bata. And then for the lower levels like kindergarten, nursery, K1, K2, we are using CISO kasi napaka-friendly nung approach niya in then the other kids can watch the videos of the kids like reading, writing. For those online platforms to be effective, ang pinaka-challenge is to educate the parents, especially sa part ko. Kasi I'm a grade 1 teacher, so I'm handling 7 sections of grade 1. So roughly na sa 140 to 150 students siya. Ang kailangan mong i-educate doon ay ang magulang. Kasi later on pa magiging independent ang bata to use. Honestly, natututo naman ang bata on their own. Pero yung first months, talagang yung parent yung i-educate mo sa, sa bagay na yun. As much as possible talaga, dapat may PowerPoint presentations ka. We give deadlines sa Google Classroom. Yun yung maganda sa Google Classroom naman is that kapag nagbigay ka ng deadline, inonotify ka kung kailan nag-handed in ng bata and then kapag ka-graded siya, pwede mo siyang ibalik, manonotify ang bata, manonotify yung magulang. At pwede ka maglagay ng deadline doon. So, kung gusto mo magbigay ng quiz, a uh, multiple choice paragraph, you can use Google Form. So, very effective naman siya. And then, we are also using different games like Kahoot, quizzes. Yun naman ay mga test online na interactive siya. Laro siya, pero kung ano yung topic mo. Pwede kang mag-search related sa tinuturo mo or pwede naman i-customize mo siya na ikaw mismo yung gagawa. Yung quizzes, Kahoot, kahit grade 1 pa lang, talaga napakita ko na sa kanila. Although, mahirap, lalo na kapag di nakakapag-English yung bata. Pero, masasanay din sila. You really have to be patient. Yun lang naman talaga ang susido. Synchronous pa as in, on a daily basis, nagko-conduct kami ng online class as much as possible, lalo na sa primary level. Why kami nakasynchronous? Kasi kahit anong gawin natin, syempre, personally, ako pipiliin ko pa rin talaga ang face-to-face -face kasi very dependent pa sa'yo yung bata. Pero dahil wala tayong choice, nandito na tayo, ang kailangan natin gawin ay gumawa ng paraan. Nakasynchronous kami na talagang ah, nakaprepare ka yung level ng energy mo as if kaharap mo sila. You would really pretend na hindi sila nandyan lang sa laptop pero nandyan sila. Hello everyone! My name's Michelle. I'm in Thailand. I'm teaching in an international school. I'm currently teaching K2. 
that's kindergarten too and they're all from four to five years old actually it's the first time for our school to do this successfully we made it through and to think that we are teaching young kids like i did it the last school year um, it was just two months, so I was teaching K1, that's three to four years old. So at first, we were doubting if we're gonna make it through, but successfully we made it. And the strategies we used is number one, of course, is total physical response, where I give instructions and the kids will respond uh, with the whole body movement. Number two, we are using thematic teaching at school and integrated teaching, which we made it through teacher-made videos. And lastly, our strategy is using also hands-on learning. And how is that possible? Through crafts. So the vocabulary, we are learning through hands-on learning, wherein I ask the parents to prepare materials for us. And then online, we are instructing the kids to do this and that. And we were having fun with the vocabulary, like for example, parts of the face. We made a craft about the body and the face of the child. And then we are teaching vocabulary in an ESO way, and then including hands-on learning. There are three platforms which are very important for us. Number one, we had line number two we have the seesaw and then we have the zoom because we have existing line groups in our school so we made that as our basic communication so we sent uh, in line groups our links to the seesaw activities and links to our Zoom online learning. Uh, I have to talk about Zoom first because it's where we do our online teaching, where we use all the free account features like screen sharing, image sharing, like PowerPoint sharing. But we also made teacher-made videos, which made me very happy because it's my first time to do it. From Zoom, we also use the Seesaw, which is our support for the activities or any homework or any crafts activities that we want them to do. So with Seesaw, we also use the free account. Number one, we can upload videos and then we can also upload uh, worksheets and activities. So the parents also help us because they will respond in two ways. Number one, they can upload videos in response to the videos that we also posted there. It could be like we want them to take videos of their kids dancing with our teacher-made videos or singing with the nursery rhymes or they can take photos of their kids doing the worksheets or doing the household chores that we want them to do. And we also see to it that all those activities are being evaluated and appreciated and we use like comments and Bitmoji stickers to make those kids happy. And then to make my classes more lively as possible because it's online, I have to use my ukulele i see here my ukulele because the, my kids sing with me using my ukulele i made it familiar to them good morning good morning good morning how are you good morning good morning i'm fine thank you good morning to the flowers good morning to the sun to the sun good morning to the boys and girls good morning everyone good morning good morning good like that <laughs> what i use in my classroom i also use online to establish a familiarity and connection i don't know about you but what really impressed me about teacher love and teacher michelle is the passion they have for teaching and their genuine concern for their students studies have shown that a teacher's empathy plays a big role in motivating students to keep learning i hope you also find ways to connect with your students across the distance my special thanks to Teacher Love and Teacher Michelle for sharing their stories with us. I'm Doc Almond of our eLearning Strategy PH, reminding you to learn fast and teach smart. Until next time. Thanks for watching this episode. This is Doc Almond of our eLearning Strategy PH, where we learn fast and teach smart.